What's up everybody, Justin here. I am back with a new Year in Wrestling 1998 Part 1 Reloaded video. Year in Wrestling Reloaded 1998. I'll be talking about mostly ECW Super Shows. That's what I'm going to talk about in this Part 1. And I'll give a little bit of uh, my thoughts on WrestleMania 14, where Stone Cold was crowned as the new WWF champ. That was awesome. It was the era of Stone Cold. The era of Stone Cold began. Also, I'll talk about... Uh, I don't know what else, but... Again, watch my original Year in Wrestling playlist on 98 where I talked about every pay-per-view and reviewed it. Here I'm going to review ECW Super Shows for 98 in this Year in Wrestling Reloaded on 98. Also in 98, this started the red and black of the NWO Wolfpack. The Wolfpack is debuted in 98. I, it was a good idea at the time. I don't think it was a bad idea, but in the long term, it didn't fucking work at all. I'd say the Wolfpack was dead and over in like a couple months. Uh, let's say they started in May or April 98, maybe March. I'm not sure. But whenever the Wolf Pack was formed, Kevin Nash as a leader, basically, I feel he was a leader. Sting, red and black, face paint of Sting. That was a pretty cool look. And uh, Lex Luger, sadly, was in it. I was never a fan of his. And Conan. And Randy Savage, which Randy Savage was taken out of it real quick because he had a bad knee injury and needed a knee replacement, I think. A knee and knee surgery. So the Wolf Pack, I only remember them being around for like, in 98, for like three, three to two to four months. Something very, very short-lived was the NWO Wolf Pack. But whatever, I still bought this. It was a pretty damn good deal. So I thought, why the hell not? I was a fucking huge wrestling fan in 98. And I still am. Nothing has changed. But in 98, I was like, I was totally obsessed. I still am, but in 98, it was even more. I was going to a ton of live events and pay-per-views. In 98, I went to Over the Edge in your house. 98, I was there live. Went with my friend and his dad. That was awesome to be at live. It was really awesome. I will always remember that event and being there for the rest of my life. I've been to, I believe, four live pay-per-views. Over the Edge, 98. King of the Ring, 96. Taboo Tuesday, 2004 or 5. Whatever. I don't remember the year, really. I think it was ta the first uh, Taboo Tuesday. Anyways, look it up. The one where it was Ric Flair, Randy Orton in a steel cage. I think it was 04. But I could be wrong. But it was in my hometown and I was there live. And I had pretty damn good seats. Right by the entrance. Right like right near the stage where the keyboard was. Also, I've been to No Way Out 2002. So that's four pay-per-views I was to. But in 98, I went to like, I'd say... In 98, I only went to one live show. Over the Edge. 99, I went to more house shows and live events. 97, I went to more. But whatever. I was at Over the Edge, 98. And I will always remember it. It was a really good time. 
So let's get to... Again, 98 was such a great fucking year in pro wrestling. You had three major companies that were absolutely doing great. Doing fantastic, insane business. Every show was sold out, basically. ECW, every show was sold out, wherever they went. Even if it's smaller arenas, they still sold out. Still had a ton of fans. In, uh, in 98, ECW had the better fan base than WCW and WWF. Well, WWF had a hot fucking fan base. The crowds were, gr were great, really loud, really hype and rowdy. But ECW had the better fans in 98, in my opinion. WCW also had pretty good fans, especially when uh, Goldberg won the title on Nitro. The fans went fucking nuts in the Georgia Dome. So, uh, and that was a just a drop of the ball by WCW. You should have put Hogan, Goldberg on a pay-per-view. But you thought you were in a ratings war. And the Monday Night War, I guess you thought was more important, Bischoff, to get a rating and defeat WWF than get a huge buy rate and make millions and millions of dollars. So first I'm going to review. So anyways, ECW was thriving. WCW was thriving until like the end of 99 and WWF was absolutely thriving. Sold out shows, sold out Nitro, sold out Raws. Every pay-per-view was sold out. It was insane. Every ECW pay-per-view looked just about sold out. And it was just such a great time to be a fucking wrestling fan during the Monday Night Wars in 98. It was such a great, fun fantastic time to be a fan I was there I lived it I was a teenager I was uh, 14 years old going into 98 and it was just absolutely awesome one of the best times of my life was living being alive for the Monday Night Wars and 98 was a better year than 97 and 96 in my opinion 96 was great because the NWO debuted. But 98 topped it. Because 98 just was awesome. Pay-per-views are really good from all three companies. I will say 98 was a lot better than 99. Because 99, the matches were shit. The matches were not good quality. Except for like Taker, Stone Cold... A rock and taker or an ECW in 99. Jerry Lynn RVD was a highlight of 99 in my opinion. And ECW was... Uh, yes, ECW was better in 98 to me than WWF and WCW what they were doing. So uh, now I'm going to review ECW's Super Show. It was not a pay-per-view, just a Super Show released on home video, ECW home video. It was ECW's House Party 98. They would always hold it, House Party, in January. It was on uh, January 10th, 98, from the ECW Arena House Party. Sell-out crowd of uh, 1,650 fans. So here are the matches. Up first, we had a six-man tag. The hardcore chair swinging freaks, Axel Rotten, Boz Mahoney, and Tommy Dreamer with Beulah McGillicuddy defeated the full-blooded Italians, the FBI. I'm not doing that to you all, by the way. That is a curse word in Italian. But that's what the FBI used to do. Little Guido, great fucking worker. My God, the guy could work. What a fucking talent he was. So, it was Little Guido, full-blood Italians, the FBI, Tommy Rich, and Tracy Smothers. <laughs> Tommy Rich shouldn't have been wrestling in 98, but the match, it was good. Because it was a six-man tag. It could hide his weaknesses. So, uh, Dreamer... 
Axelrotten and Boz Mahoney defeated the FBI. Up next, we had Jerry Lynn defeat Chris Candido by submission. That was really good. Up next, we had from Japan. Some legendary Japan talent going at it. Gran Hamada defeated Gran... Gran Nawawa. I can't pronounce the guy's name, but I know Gran Hamada is. The guy's a legend. I don't know if he's still alive. I hope. But uh, he, his daughter was a great wrestler. Hamada. She was a TNA knockout. She was fucking awesome. She was also in Shimmer. I don't know if Hamada's wrestling anymore. Gran Hamada's daughter, but she was fucking great in the ring. And she's really good in uh, TNA. I think she's there only like a year or two. So up next we had uh, Gran Hamada, by the way, won. In 98, ECW booked uh, Gran Hamada a little bit. Also, they booked him in 97 at Barely Legal. Up next we had Al Snow with Head. The Head and Al Snow. Head just debuted, I would say, in like November 97. At the November to remember, he did a backstage promo with Head. Well, anyways, in 98, at a house party, Al Snow came out with Head. Had the Prodigy playing. What a great theme song for Al Snow and Head because he's shaking the head. The fans in the ECW arena, oh, the styrofoam heads, they were doing it at the same time. It was a fucking insane Looked like a great, fun time to be in the ECW arena with those styrofoam heads. They had the lights off, strobe lights, with the Prodigy playing. It looked like a fucking blast. I wish I would have been there. Wish I could have been there, but I didn't live in Philly. And I, my family wasn't rich, so I couldn't get to Philly and fly there to try to go. Uh, I wasn't like Tony Khan, who actually got to go to ECW shows because his dad is a fucking billionaire. That's how he got to go. Or he got good grades, and then his dad said, okay, where you want to go, you can go wherever you want, whatever show you want. He said ECW. So Al Snow defeated uh, Roadkill. Just incredible up next with Jason and Nicole Bass. I still don't know what Nicole Bass was. <laughs> I do know she got her start on the Howard Stern show. She was in the Whack Pack. Sadly, she has passed away. Uh, rest in peace, Nicole Bass. You were a great Whack Packer, but you weren't good in wrestling. You had no, you had. No charisma. You couldn't take bumps. You couldn't really wrestle. I guess you could do an okay like bear hug or power slam, and that was about it. Nicole Bass, you were great as a whack packer in the whack pack. You were not great in wrestling, but rest in peace still. And she was actually tested. Yes, she was a female, not a man. Even though the fans loved to chant at her in 98 offensive chants, they would chant, that's a man, that's a man, you got balls, you got balls, and stuff like that. I'm not, or so just incredible defeated the great Sasuke. Really good stuff, and it put over just incredible. It pushed him even more, winning over the great Sasuke. I don't know how Paul Heyman did it, but he got the great Sasuke to put over Just Incredible. And in 98, Just Incredible was a fucking rising star. The guy became a really damn good worker also. Up next, Rob Van Dam defeated Bam Bam Bigelow. They had a pretty damn good match. RVD dove over the guardrail, taking out Bam Bam in a whole bunch of chairs. RVD was fucking insane. The guy must have been high because he took insane bumps and dives into the crowd. Of course he was high because no one gets higher than RVD. 
I was a huge fan of RVD, especially in 98, when I got to watch all the pay-per-views of ECWs. RVD was uh, definitely one of my favorite wrestlers in 99. 98, I didn't see much RVD. A uh, fun fact, in 98 is when I was exposed to ECW. And I saw my first ever ECW pay-per-view. I was blown away. I thought it was real. It looked real. And I was hooked. And I wanted to see more of ECW in 98. Sadly, I couldn't. Until like 99. Then I saw their pay-per-view. Living Dangerously was available to order on my cable system. So I fucking ordered it. I didn't pay for it at 15. But I had my mom order it for me. So, uh, yeah, I only saw one ECW show in 98, but I thought it was awesome. And it was definitely different from what I saw from WWF and WCW. Again, it looked real and it was awesome. So RVD, we know he likes the weed, so he's probably high a lot in 98 and 99 and still is. I'm not putting that down. There's nothing wrong with uh, smoking. Nothing wrong with that. So RVD defeated Bam Bam. Up next for the ECW TV title. Taz defeated two Code Scorpio. Scorpio for some reason returned. When he's still with the WWF. But they weren't using him barely. So he went back to ECW a little bit. Taz defeated two Cold by submission. And before the match, uh, Taz cut a promo, and they were in Philly. Taz is from New York. The Philly fans are chanting, fuck New York. Fuck New York. Because the Philly fans in ECW and the New York fans had a rivalry. So up next, the Dudley boys defeat. Uh, Big Dick Dudley, Bubba Ray Devon defeated... The Gangster Naders, John Cronus, New Jack, and Spike Dudley. And the main event was a Stairway to Hell ladder match. The Sandman defeated Sabu. It was fucking bloody. And it was violent. And I loved it. Tables were used. Chairs were used. Ladders were used. It was like an original TLC match before TLC. They had a giant ladder you had to pull down barbed wire from the ceiling to use it on your opponent. That's why it's called the Stairway to Hell ladder match. So uh, Sandman got busted open badly. I believe he bladed way too much because he's bleeding a ton. He had barbed wire around his head. Sabu put a chair in front of it. Double stomped the chair and the barbed wire into Sandman's forehead. So he bled a ton. Sabu got cracked with a cane on his jaw. I think he broke his jaw because he started taping it up. Anyways, this uh, ends my year in wrestling. Reloaded, 1998 Part 1. I'll be back with a Part 2 sometime in the future. Probably this weekend, I don't know, but Saturday or Sunday, I will say. Like, comment, share, and subscribe. Check out the description and go to my PayPal. Leave me a tip if you can. So, uh, have a great Friday, everybody. Have a great weekend. And uh, I will do a longer part two on 1998 than I did for this part one. Again, have a great weekend. Hope you enjoyed it. Bye for now.